Jnanjanachalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurabe Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Sri Jutha Padakamalam, Sri Guru Vaishnavamscha, Sri Rupam Sagrajataham, Sahakana Raghunatham Vitham, Tham Sajivam, Sadvaitam, Sabadutam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha, Krishna Padahan Sahakana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Brinda Baneshwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhubya Evacha Patitanam Bhava Nibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Welcome. Let us take a moment to offer a silent prayer to Shri Shri Nitai Gorachanja, Shri Radha Gopinath, Shri Gopal, to shower their mercy, blessings, and grace upon our beloved. Shambhalaba Prabhu. His immortal soul has been taken from our presence. This particular prayer that we have sung is by Vasudev Ghosh, who was a personal associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In 1900, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, these great histories of Lord Chaitanya's life, we find three brothers, Madhava Ghosh, Govinda Ghosh, and Vasudev Ghosh. Their speciality was singing kirtan. In Jagannath Puri, every year, during Ratha Yatra, in front of one of the chariots leading the Kirtan party was Vasudev Ghosh and his brothers. Every year, selected by Lord Chaitanya. 
And there were beautiful stories of how they traveled with Lord Nityananda Prabhu. For instance, in Panihati. When Lord Nityananda Prabhu would be in the mood of a cowherd boy of Sri Vrindavan Dham, he would especially ask Vasudev Ghosh, Madhava Ghosh, Govinda Ghosh to sing. Because when they would sing Kirtan with such love, with such feeling, with such sincerity, literally, through their devotion and through the sound vibration, the whole environment would be transformed into Vrindavan. Because although Vrindavan is located in the spiritual sky beyond material creation, beyond the impersonal, all-pervading light of Brahma Jyoti, beyond the Vaikuntha planets <coughs> where the Lord lives eternally and is worshipped with veneration. The Madhu Madhurya Dham, that place where the Lord reciprocates with his devotees, with sweetness, with love, with transcendental familiarity. Where Krishna appears as our friend, our child, our lover. Wherever that mood is shared by devotees. Wherever devotees chant the holy names with that unity of hearts, with Krishna in the center. That place is transformed into Brindavan. When these devotees would sing, even little children who had came in contact with them, they would dance in ecstasy. They would roar like lions, the holy name. They would forget eating and sleeping for one month at a time. Little five-year-old children. They could pick up any heavy object and dance with it. Not to show their strength, but they were just intoxicated by the sound vibration of the holy names. And most amazing, they were in so much ecstasy, their hair standing on end, tears flowing from their eyes, chanting and dancing and chanting and dancing. Their parents didn't even ask them to come home. Because <laughs> they saw that their children attained perfection. Even if their parents were atheists or anything else, they couldn't help but being transformed by seeing their children's happiness. How many parents don't mind their five-year-old child not eating or drinking for one month <laughs> or sleeping? They only did two things. They danced and they chanted. Their parents would look up and they would see their child so much happy they'd climb to the top of a tree and shout out, Huddy, Huddy, and jump to the ground. Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda would hear the pure devotion in the chanting of these devotees. They would enter into states of ecstatic love that the world has never seen. So Vasu Ghosh is not just speaking an idea. 
He's speaking what he directly, personally saw. In the third verse, it is said that in olden times, as Lord Ramchandra, he liberated Ravana with a bow and an arrow. <laughs> Struck Ravana in the heart. In Brindaban, even when Krishna was a baby, he was liberating demons. Never did he use a weapon. When he was just a few days old, he just drank, he just sucked from Putana and she was finished. She came to murder Krishna. Not only that, she had already murdered so many innocent babies. She would eat their flesh and drink their blood. She was actually a demon. And she came with the wicked intention to kill Krishna. And Krishna knew it. He was just hardly opening his eyes. And she picked up Krishna. She put deadly, deadly poison upon her breast and gave it to Krishna to drink. And little baby Krishna, his hands were only about this big. He just grabbed onto her and drank. And kept drinking. There was nothing left to drink, but he kept sucking. He was sucking her life from her. Then she would resume this gigantic form. And Krishna's hands were still little tiny and he, was, he wouldn't let go. He gave Putana's eternal soul this eternal liberation of living in the spiritual world as his mother forever, with motherly love. How is that possible? Because even though she had so many bad intentions, she had so much horrible karma, still she approached him as a mother. And somehow or other, for a moment, she f felt a little, a little trace of motherly love for him. So Krishna took the best from her. He removed all the rest and gave her liberation. And sometimes he used his little hand. In Dwarka, he had his Sudarshan Chakra. Lord Chaitanya, he was unique among all avatars because he never hurt anybody. He would kill the demoniac qualities in the heart and awaken the original spiritual qualities in the heart. Dinahina yatta chilo harinamu udhari lo tara sakshi jagai madhai. Jagai and madhai were the cruelest of all people in this entire world. Through the weapon of the holy names, through the weapon of mantra, he cleansed people's hearts. 
Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, and awakened their ecstatic, dormant prema, love for Krishna. This morning, we were discussing at some length how prior to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's advent in this world, he revealed special mercy to the greatest personalities in the entire universe. This evening we are celebrating the Lord's appearance. I will briefly narrate the story. Seeing the effects of Kali Yuga, the proneness for human beings to quarrel for nothing. In our own little modern history, we, there are wars with hundreds, thousands, millions of people killed for useless misunderstandings. Bhaktaram yagatapasam saravaloka maheshwaram suhridam saravamotinam Bhagavad Gita tells that there cannot be peace within oneself or within the world until we understand that everything is God's property. Nothing is mine. Janasya moho yamaham mameti the basic root of material conflict is I am this body and what is it, whatever is in relation to this body is mine. This is my body. This is my intelligence. This is my skills. This is my money. This is my family. This is my race, my religion, my species, my nation. Such useless way of thinking. As long as we put our own interest in the center of our life, then it's inevitable there will be conflict. There's potentially conflict between everyone. But when we have a common center, when we understand that whatever intelligence I have is a gift of God, we may work hard to develop it, but God gives us all the materials to work with and all the information to develop it with. Whatever skills we have, whatever property we have, whatever money we have, it's, it's God's property. In devotional society, sometimes we call wealth Lakshmi. But Lakshmi is Narayan. Lakshmi is never separated from Narayan. The only separation is avidya, our ignorance. Krishna says, time I am. This little body of ours, how long will it last? Padam padam yadvi padam natesham, at any moment it could be gone. And in a few minutes, in a few moments, with absolute certainty, it will be gone. 
few moments calculated perhaps in years. So is it my body? This body is material nature. Nayad yakshena prakriti suyate satcharacharam. Krishna is the controller of material nature. So this ahankar, this false ego of I and mine, when it's deeply rooted and when it's widespread, it creates an atmosphere of so much quarrel and hypocrisy. These are the predominant characteristics of this age, quarrel and hypocrisy. People fight and argue and waste their mind's energy and waste their precious moments of time for things that are... There's no purpose. And people are so prone to material enjoyment at the risk of the opportunity of utilizing this valuable lifetime to realize our eternal love, our eternal identity. And even in the name of dharma and religion, even in the name of philosophy, there are just various decorative, intellectual forms of the ego. Decorating the ego to make it look liberated. To make it look for it somehow or other, even in the name of humility, to make us look like we're better than others. So religion is taken to be irreligion, irreligion is taken to be religion. Srivas Thakur, who was a descent of Narada Muni, Advaitacharya, Gopeshwar Mahadev, Sadashiva, Mahavishnu, Haridas Thakur, who is Brahma. Such great personalities like this were living in the area of Navadvipa. They were praying, praying, Krishna, please come down into this world and help us. When it was Krishna's desire to descend into this world, first he, he sent many of his eternal associates as his seniors. In Silat, Bangladesh, there was a great Brahma named Sri Upendra Mishra. He had seven sons. The fifth of his sons was Jagannath Mishra. Jagannath Mishra decided to live close to the banks of the Ganges and he moved to Nadia. And there he married Sachi Devi who was the daughter of Nilambar Chakravarti, one of the greatest philosophers and astrologers of the time. Around the same time, Nityananda Prabhu, Paramananda Puri, of course before that Madhavendra Puri, Ishwara Puri, Morari Gupta, they appeared in various provinces, just waiting to come together for the right time. Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi, not just for some emotional purpose, but springing from the very core of their souls, they wanted to have a child. 
because it was Krishna's will to be their child. They had a daughter. Just after the birth, the daughter died. About a year later or more, they had another daughter. Eight daughters consecutively died just after birth. A mother, a father, carrying a child for nine months, nourishing, loving, eager to, to hold your little child and raise your child and love your child, all these motherly loving instincts, and they keep dying. But because it was Krishna's will to be a child, they never gave up their hope. They worshipped their Shalagram Shila at home, praying for a child to be born alive. And they had a little son, who was an expansion of Lord Balaram. And they named the child Vishwarup. Now this is the quality of Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra. Common people, they approach God when they're in need, when there's some desperation, when there's urgency, danger, strife. We intensely turn to God, please help, please help. But then when he helps and everything's all right, you know, okay, God, you could go now. <laughs> Everything's all right. May not say it like that, but their devotion is, it becomes, again, complacent, mediocre, whatever word. But Jagannath Misha, Sachi Devi, they were such devotees. When they had this beautiful child, Vishwarup, they were so grateful that they increased the quantity, the quality, and all of their devotional energies in worshiping the Lord. It was out of love and gratitude. There are many tests in our life. Sometimes there's tests when things go wrong. But one of the, sometimes even a bigger test is when things go right. <laughs> when things go wrong, we take shelter. There's, I have no other hope. Please, Krishna, save me. And when things are going really nice, Okay, Krishna, if you want, you could save me. <laughs> but Jagannath Misha Sachi Devi, in their good fortune, their love and their devotion and their sense of urgency was based on gratitude, on reciprocation. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami tells there's three external reasons why the Lord appeared in this world and three internal reasons. The external reasons is to fulfill his promise in Bhagavad Gita. Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyutanama dharmasya tadatmanam srijamya. 
Krishna tells, I descend into this material universal creation again and again and again to reestablish the principles of religion. Also, for the purpose of establishing the Yuga Dharma. In this age of Kali Yuga, Hadar Nama, Hadar Nama, Hadar Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nasteva, 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 Gatiranyata. The scriptures, the Vedic literatures tell us in Satya Yuga, the recommended Yuga Dharma was meditation. But such meditation was with such detachment and such focus and concentration. In Treta Yuga, performing yajna with perfect precision in every mantra, in every, in, in every action, every ritual. Because actually such yajnas, it's not just a ritual. To do it properly, it's a total absorption in meditation. In Dwapa Yuga, worshiping the Lord in the temple with precision. And in the age of Kali, because it's very, very rare for anyone to be able to properly do those others to the point of such total 24-hour absorption in the Supreme and detachment from ego. Yajnai Sankirtana, what is that? Tasbad Sankirtanam Yasya Sarva Tasmat Sankirtanam Vishnu Jagan Mangalamang Hasam. The supreme, most auspicious activity is the congregation of chanting of the holy names in this age of Kali. It's the Yuga Dharma. It's accessible to everyone at every moment. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to establish the Sankirtan movement. But not just Sankirtan, Prem Sankirtan. The Sankirtan that Golokera Premadana Harinam Sankirtana. He came to bring the same process of Sankirtan that is eternally being enacted in the spiritual world of Goloka. It's the Sankirtan of accessing and expressing Prem. And he came to fulfill the prayers of Sri Adwaita, that great devotee who was crying for years, begging Krishna, please come and show compassion to all these people who are suffering in Kali Yuga. Srivas Thakur and his brothers at their house at Srivas Angam were having kirtans sometimes all day and all night every day just praying, Krishna, please come and help these people. And Haridas Thakur would be sitting in his caves constantly chanting the holy names. The internal reasons is Krishna. He had a desire to understand the glory of Sri Radha's love. To understand the wonderful qualities in him that she alone relishes through her love. And to understand the happiness that she feels 
when she realizes the sweetness of his love. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami tells Krishna is the source of all love. But he's thinking, how could anyone have more love than me? But Sri Radha is Ladini Shakti, the feminine counterpart. The glory of her love is she conquers him at every moment with her love. In Vrindavan, there are many wonderful places, Man Mandir, where Krishna is begging for Sri Radha's love. Who could conquer God? God is all powerful, He's the source of all power. An expansion of an expansion of an expansion of an expansion is Mahavishnu. Simply by his exhalation, he creates all the universes and the cosmic manifestation. And by his inhal and inhalation, it all comes back into his body and becomes unmanifest. Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. Yes, Krishna is unconquerable, but he's conquered by the love of his devotee. And because each and every one of us as jivas, as eternal servants, as parts of Krishna, because a little part of Radha's love is in the heart of every living being, each and every one of us can conquer Krishna by our love, if it's pure. And there's nothing that Krishna enjoys better than being conquered by his devotees. Conquered by the love of his devotees. And Sri Radha is the origin and sum total of all love. Krishna's love. Veda ham samatitani varata manani chajana babashani chabutani mam tu vedana kashjana. Krishna tells in Gita, I know everything past, present, and future. I know all living beings. I know everything. But there's one thing he wants to know. When Radharani When she sees me, she goes into such a state of bliss that I can't even fathom what that bliss is. I could only understand what I do to her if I take her sentiments. I can only understand the happiness she feels when she realizes my love. if I accept her mood. So the one absolute truth is eternally two for the, sake of, for the purpose of loving reciprocation. And they become one again. Radha Bhava Dhuti Subalitam Nomi Krishna Swarupam. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna with the Mahabhav, the supreme love of Sri Radha. And with the beautiful golden complexion of Sri Radha. One great sage explained that when Shri Krishna told Radharani, I am going to appear in the world with your Mahabhav within my heart. She said, then whenever you see you, you're going to roll on the ground in ecstasy, and I don't want you to get hurt, 
so I will cover you, cover you with my complexion. That is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So here, Radha Krishna exchanging intimate love in one form. But not only to taste it, to distribute it. Namo Mahabharan Yaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gaudatve She Namaha Sri Rupa Goswami prayed like this. There are many avatars. But Lord Chaitanya is the most munificent, even more than Krishna. Because in this core avatar, Radha, Rani, and Krishna are sharing their combined ecstatic love for each other with the world. Sri Radha's compassion, Sri Krishna's compassion in one are offering to the whole world. This is the gift, the matchless gift. So it was in the month of January or Mag, in the year of 1485, that Krishna, in the mood of Sri Radha, entered into the heart of Jagannath Mishra. Jagannath Mishra told Sachi Devi that I had a vision. I saw the entire spiritual world with all its light, and it entered into my heart. And then I saw that the spiritual world from my heart entered into your heart. I think a very special child is soon to be born. Soon after, Sachi Devi became pregnant. Jagannath Misha was a simple Brahmin. In those days, Brahmins never worked jobs. <laughs> because they didn't want anything. <laughs> they were happy just studying the scriptures and teaching others, doing pujas, chanting the names of the Lord, studying, teaching. And they never charged. Whatever charity someone decides to give, they accept it. But whatever they have, they just, it's, it's just there to facilitate so, then, so that they could give to others. An actual Brahman is a life of total giving. Brahman is not just a caste. Brahman is not just a particular birth that we take. It's a quality. It's a quality of a person who's very simple and whose happiness is in giving to others. Husbands, wives, if they have children. We, we live simple. And we're living for society. We're here to teach. Brahmins given charity. They receive charity and they give charity. So Jagannath Mishra was quite simple. And at that time there was a very terrible drought that was happening in that area of India. Jagannath Mishra told Sachi Devi, when I go out and I walk down the road, people are offering me respect wherever I go. It's never happened like this before. And people just come up to me and they give me riches, they give me cloth, they give me food. And Sachi Devi, she told her husband Jagannath, 
Sometimes when I go to rest at night or even in the day, I see in the sky celestial beings offering prayers to the child in my womb. Sachimata, when the Lord appeared within her, she became effulgent, full of light, full of joy. But 13 months passed and the child was still in the womb. So they became apprehensive because after all, they lost eight daughters consecutively. So they approached Sachi's father, Nilambar Chakravarti said, please tell us, why is it taking so long? <laughs> and when is this child going to be born? Nilambar Chakravarti, he was a real astrologer. <laughs> In other words, he was always right. sure there's many astrologers in the room today. <laughs> so I'm not going to make any statements, but my experience is sometimes astrologers are right and sometimes they're not right. But my experience is that's the way everybody is. <laughs> When you really know the science and you really have the shakti and the intuition, Neelam Chakravarti was the great astrologer. He did the calculations and he said, this will be a very, very auspicious, special child. And he is waiting for the most auspicious possible moment before he comes out of your womb and is born. So what's the most auspicious moment? There was a lunar eclipse. Now some people consider lunar eclipses to be inauspicious. And because they think it's inauspicious, they don't want any inauspiciousness to affect their material lives. So even the most materialistic people, in those days especially, some superstition, during an eclipse, you have to go in the water of the Ganges, because it's pure, and you have to stay submerged in the water of Ganges, at least halfway submerged, from the beginning of the eclipse till the end of the eclipse. <laughs> Sometimes eclipses go on for hours. <laughs> and the whole time they're chanting the names Hadi Hadi. Hadi Hadi. Now if you're really a materialistic person and you really want to enjoy and you really don't want any interferences or obstructions of inauspiciousness, how are you going to chant? You are not supposed to say anything. <laughs> anyway, sometimes things come out. <laughs> and the devotees, they don't really care whether it's an eclipse or not. They're just always happy to chant, and if, if, if everybody else is chanting, they're especially joyful, chanting the holy names, the Maha Mantra, very loudly.
Some of the devotees, like Srivas, when he saw it, tens and thousands of people in the eclipse night, in the Ganges, crying out, Hari Hari! Hari Hari! <laughs> he said to his brothers, let this eclipse last forever. <laughs> and even people who weren't Hindus, even Muslim people, they would see tens and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people just crammed in the Ganges loudly crying out the Hare Krishna mantra. All they could do is go, Hari Hari. <laughs> some of them were joking, some of them just, it, it was contagious. Everyone, everyone in Nadia, everyone in Navadweep Dam was in the river chanting the holy names. And it was in the month of Palgun which is February, March in 1486. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami tells that when the full moon of Lord, the full golden moon of Gora Chandra was going to appear in the world, there was no need for the light of a moon with so many spots. During the eclipse, Lord Chaitanya, in his infancy, he induced everyone to chant the holy names. At that time, he appeared. Srila Prabhupada gives an explanation of Mayapur Chandrodaya. It's the name of our temple in Mayapur. that Lord Chaitanya is like the moon who has risen in Mayapur. And the rays, the cooling rays of the moon is his mercy. The rays of his grace shining for everyone. The rays of a full moon are most refreshing and cooling. And the rays of the moon are not partial to one person or another. It's our choice whether we're going to expose ourselves or not. When Lord Chaitanya appeared, the devotees, they didn't really understand that their prayer was answered. They just felt complete ecstasy. They were dancing, they were chanting. They knew, but by the Lord's Yogamaya potency, they knew, but they didn't know. It's just some little layer, they didn't, they, they all came rushing to Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi's house to see their newborn little child, who was born under a neem tree. It was so beautiful. The relatives and neighboring ladies of Navadweep, he looks just like Gop Gopal of Brindavan, but he has a golden complexion. So the ladies named him Gore Hari. Nilambar Chakravarti, when it came for the name giving ceremony, he did another calculation. This child will nourish and protect the entire universe. Therefore, his name will be Vishwambar. 
And Sachi Mata, because he was born under a neem tree, she called him Nimai. And others, because he had such beautiful golden limbs, they called him Goranga. When he was just a little infant child, the same day he was born, when people came to see him, his lotus eyes, he'd gaze upon them and melt their hearts. Everyone that saw him fell in love with him. Inconceivable, incredible. They loved him more than they loved their own children. They loved him more than anything and everything. And they didn't even know he was God. They just loved him unconditionally. And when you love someone, you want them to be happy. That's the, the highest aspiration of love, is to make your beloved happy. So Nimai would cry, and they couldn't bear it. It was too much. Nimai's crying. Whatever disaster you read about in the news, it can't hurt your heart as much as Nimai crying. So they would try to make him happy. He'd be crying. I'm not going to try to cry like that. <laughs> and they would offer him little, they would pick him up and they would rock him and they would offer him so many little things to put in his mouth or whatever that you do for babies. I don't know. I'm a sannyasi. <laughs> but they were trying everything and he was crying and he was crying and finally, out of desperation, they cried out, Hari, Hari! Hari, Hari! And he, he smiled. He gazed upon them with such gratitude, with such affection. How is this? When little Nimai was pleased and he gazed and smiled, that smile was beaming with blessings and grace. And they understood every time he would cry, they would gather around him, make a circle, clap their hands, and chant the Maha Mantra. <laughs> In this way, he appeared, inducing everyone to chant the names of the Lord. And his, in his infancy, he induced everyone around him to chant the holy names of the Lord. There are limitless pastimes. Vrindavan Das Thakur tells, that when a bird flies in the sky, how much of the sky can a bird cover? But still, the bird flies the best he or she can fly. He said, in the same way, the glories of the Lord, the pastimes of the Lord, the sweetness of the Lord are limitless beyond skies, how much can we explain? But like a little bird, we try our best. Gaur Purnima. This holy, holy most of all holy days, when Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears in this world, he gives a special opportunity 
to make that spiritual connection with Our prayers, our chanting, our studying, our devotional activities, in any time, in any circumstance, they will purify us. But on a holy day like Gaur Purnima, it's a supercharged opportunity. It's a time when limitless grace is accessible, available. today let us pray pray that we can sincerely receive this grace through our sadhana through our seva through our satsang through harikata And let us pray that we could be instruments of this grace. Because there's nothing that makes the Lord happier than when we receive his love and share that love with others. That is what Lord Chaitanya came to exhibit in his own life, in the role of a devotee. He taught us how to access that divine love of Krishna through kirtan, kata, the nine processes of devotional service, and how to give pleasure to the Lord by sharing that love with others. Paramakaruna Pahundri Jana Nitai Chandra. Supreme compassion. That is the essence of Lord Chaitanya's descent into this world and he descends into our hearts whenever, wherever. We, sincere, we sincerely call his holy names. Thank you very much. You seem to be quite happy that I ended. <laughs> now there will be Gora Arti, a special once a year Gor Purnima Arti for Lord. Nitai Goro Chandra. Thank you.
की गुणिताए की जाए की बजे ओ जय गोरा छंदे आरती किशो
मधुरा मृदंगा वे परमर साला मधुर 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 बाजे शंख बाजे घंटा बाजे मधुर 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 बाजे जग जन मना जग जन मन लोभा जग जन मन लोभा जग जन मरा लोबा हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नी पाए गोर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल गर हरि
ಮಾನವೇತಾವನೆ ಜಗಮನ ಲೋಭ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶಿವ ಸದೇ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೇಂದ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶಿವ ಸದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೇಂದ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶಿವ ಸದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೇಂದ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶಿವ ಸದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೇಂದ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 